Now, if any of you guys watched last week's video, you might be curious as to why the lighting and looks and vibe of, of the actual video and stuff seems the same. And the short answer is, I'm recording it at the same time. <laughs> I apologize for the lighting. I don't know what it is doing. It's the window, it's being weird and um, very blinding at some points. But that is not the point of this video. The point of this video is to review Elementals. Elemental came out in 2023. And to be completely honest, I didn't want to watch it. I, I was unaware of it on any source of anything it was completely not a movie that i was even going to attempt to watch it it just kind of existed in the space of more disney movies and i think one of the real reasons why i, I didn't watch it is because i was getting really sick and tired of disney movies i was getting really sick and tired of the same movie over and over and over again where nothing, nothing was ever, it wasn't an actual story it, it, and it, it was generic and the humor was bad. But when I tell you that this movie felt like Disney was going back to its roots, felt like Disney was making a good movie, finally, I mean it. I absolutely loved this movie. I think it was a phenomenal movie. But in order to truly understand how good this movie is, we gotta look at the people who is behind it. This movie was directed and written by Peter Sohn, along with John Hoberg, Kat Lakell, and Brenda Suya, I think is how you pronounce that. I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. So this movie is actually loosely based off of Sohn's youth growing up as a son of immigrants in New York City during the 70s, which I think is a really cool, really cool concept. And you can really see the 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 inspiration behind that. It's it is such like this movie is considered a romantic comedy drama film. Excuse me. This movie is considered a romantic comedy drama film. But it really and truly feels like a, a look into immigration during that specific time period. It's very much doesn't look like it. It very much doesn't look like a, 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 a story about immigration, but it feels like it. It almost gives off similar vibes as the American story. If any of you guys have seen that, I highly recommend it. It is a really, really good movie, but it gives similar vibes uh almost the 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 story is so good because you get to watch and and i'm meaning i'm 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 like nerding out a little bit because this is the first time disney has made a movie like this in so long because if we're being honest every other movie that's come out from disney in the past six to seven years is garbage it's hot piles of garbage and i understand that this is also a pixar movie and pixar is usually really good when it comes to the animated stuff but if we look at the pixar movies that have been coming out it's all the same generic art style which brings me to the point that this this movie is beautiful it is stunning i don't know how they animated fire and water and and clouds and and they they did such a good job with the animation that I don't see a lot of people talking about it. I want to know how they did it because if we look at what they've been putting out, they've got this like rhythm, this, this generic style that they've been doing with like Luca and, uh, uh, all of the other, I can't, can't think of any others off the top of my head, but the most of the recent like Pixar movies that have been coming out, they all have the same style of animation. Whereas this one, this one was bringing it back to Pixar's roots where Pixar was like the pinnacle and, and the inspiration for a lot of development in animation and the, the evolution of animation. And I really love that. I really love that they, they it, this really feels like we're, we're getting an actual story and it gave me hope that Disney isn't done yet because growing up, Disney had some really amazing stories to tell. 
it had some classic, truly beautiful like animation movies that you could watch with the whole family. And th this movie is just like this. It really encompasses that feeling and that vibe that you got from when you were a kid watching like Toy Story or uh, other movies. Wow, my brain just went completely blank. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me a lot more than you would think. And I haven't even I haven't even talked about the romance part of this this movie. And for most of you guys, if you've been here before, you know I am a sucker for a really good romance. And this has such strong like Romeo and Juliet vibes. It's it's Romeo and Juliet with a happy ending. I I can it's just so good. You got Ember, who's the fire lady, and you've got Wade, who's the water man, and which, by the way, very, very much reminds me of that Cool Maths game. I don't know if any of you, I'll look it up and like put it on the screen. If any of you guys have played that game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't remember the name of it, but you know what I'm talking about. But they fall in love, and, it, and it's believable. Their chemistry is believable. which is another thing that I think they did really, really well. And I really think not a, not a lot of people talk about, at least not that I've seen. The chemistry between Wade and Ember fits. It's there. She's the more stoic, uh, hard-headed, hot-blooded individual. And he's kind of like, whoop, ah, my bad. I hit the camera. Are you guys okay? Okay. He's the more you know, go with the flow and crybaby-esque, you know, vibes to it. And it fits with their elements and stuff. But there's there's a line towards the end of the movie where Wade and Amber uh, hold hands and hug. And Wade, Ember like goes away. Wade goes after her. And at this like big party thing, Wade says one of the cheesiest lines that in any other movie or with any other concept would have would have been the cringiest thing, but it worked for this movie. And I, I, I can't express that enough. We touched and when we did something happened to us, something impossible, we changed each other's chemistry. One thing that Disney movies have been doing is just been chock full of truly cringy comedy. Like comedy that wasn't funny, it was just cringy. And that's what they ex expected to be the funny part is the cringe. It wasn't in this movie. Every single joke was hilarious. Start new life. Your mother and I will be here. Now with more time for hanky panky. Hey, shoot. <laughs> I... Uh, I can't I can't express in words how good this movie made me feel because it was just a good story. It was well written, it was well directed, it was well animated, it was well acted. And I I can't express in words what that means to me. It really brings me hope for the future of kids movies and the future of family movies. Because from what I've been seeing coming out of Disney and coming out of, of Pixar and all of these other, you know, Sony animation, it's just cash grab after cash grab, almost AI written hot piles of garbage. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% positive I'm not alone in that statement. I've heard nothing but truly awful things about the movie Wish. I've heard nothing but truly awful things uh, about the Megamind 2. Uh, I made a whole video about Kung Fu Panda 4. Like, movies have not been doing all that good in the entertainment side of things. And this was a breath of fresh air. And this really goes to show that if you get the right people behind a movie, you can make a phenomenal movie. And I'd say the box office would would show that it had a budget of 200 million dollars and made 
$896.4 million. It doubled its uh, uh, expenses. It, it, it doubled its, its expenses. And I, I think it could have made more. I genuinely think it could have made more. Because one thing that I think really dis discredited a lot of the, the work that they put into this movie is the marketing for it. I didn't hear about the movie until it had already came out. And I'm making a video on it a year after it came out. And it's, it's, I think it just, it flopped so hard in the uh, marketing department. If they had a better marketing department behind it. They probably could have doubled or tripled the amount of money that they made because it was such a good movie. The dynamic between Ember and her dad, the dynamic between Ember and her mom. Crap, I said an F word, my bad. Uh, that's just how, how passionate I am about this. The, the dynamic between Wade and his family, the subtle, like microaggressions that they showed towards Ember, like clearly these people aren't actually trying to be mean, but the microaggressions are there. And it did that so subtly and so perfectly, like it expressed what you're not supposed to do, or it showed why that's not bad in a subtle way, clean way that people could understand. And, and in my opinion, they shouldn't be able to get upset about, you, you know who I'm talking about, but those people shouldn't be able to get upset about that because it's, it's, it was done really, really, really well. And I, I genuinely could go on and on and on, but I, I feel like I've made, I've made my point and, and I think it'd be good for me to give you guys my score. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. I think this movie was really, really good. I think it did not get the recognition it deserved. I think it, it deserved a lot better. I think I think you guys should go watch it and form your own opinion and then come back and tell me what you guys think. And if you agree, then let's nerd out together in the comments. And if you don't agree, then tell me why. Because I'm really curious as to what your guys' opinion of it are, is. I watched it like two hours ago. So who knows? Maybe I have like recent bias or whatever it is. I think that I'm going to leave that here. If you've got any wishes or remarks, leave it down in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.